All right. Good morning. It is uh, October the third, the year twenty twenty one. Can you believe it? All right. Uh, the purpose of the uh, Justice Coalition and the uh, the meetings that we do are to empower the local 241 and local 308 members with tools to take control of their unions and inspire humble and accountable leadership. Our organization, our website is an independent caucus, but, uh, and it is, it does not officially represent the Amalgamated Transit Union or locals 241 and 308. Uh, I am a union steward in local 308 and uh, am functioning within the uh, law as far as the Landrum Griffin Act of organizing. Uh, all of us can organize, all of us, can, any of us can start an organization, any of us can organize a meeting, a protest uh, without interference from our union officers if it is to improve working conditions and our communities we are not slaves uh the the reason why we call this a revolutionary unionism uh, 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 uh a meeting is uh, it's about education what is revolutionary unionism it is to take power from the employer and the politicians through direct action at work and democratically control our unions. By doing so, we can dismantle the service and transactional model of business unionism, which has neutralized our power for over 50 years. I a special thanks to brother Cody for uh, allowing us to use his Zoom account. And uh, as you see, we got the agenda right here. If you want to follow along with the study guide now or at another time, just go to chicagotransitworker.com and uh, click on the, it's called the Union Reformation uh, link. And that's what we're all about. We're reforming our union, taking it away from the elite business unionists and putting it in the hands of the rank and file workers and you click on justice coalition virtual meetings and right there uh just scroll down and you'll see you can register for meeting notices and there's the agendas so for every meeting that we've had there's an agenda check it out every agenda has a study guide as well let's get started with the history lesson and that's down here in the agenda. January 29th, 1912, what a year. <laughs> that was the day striking worker Anna Lopizo was shot and killed by local police during the pivotal Bread and Roses strike in Lawrence, Massachusetts. In what is considered one of the most important strikes in labor, American labor history. The industrial workers of the world had organized a strike that brought out more than 30,000 textile mill workers at the American Woolen Company. Workers had been on strike for most of the month, picketing, marching, giving speeches, and stopping scabs. Their banners demanded a living wage and dignity, bread and roses. That day, there were workers, per, workers parades among pitched battles between strikers, police, and scabs. Gunfire erupted. According to Big Bill Haywood, 19 witnesses saw police officer Oscar Benoit, Benoit shoot Anna Lopizo. But the shooting provided the mill owners with an opportunity to crack down on the strike. Martial law was instituted and all public meetings and marches were banned. The leading IWW strike organizers, John Ettore and Arturo Giovanniti, 
were arrested for her murder, despite the fact that they were two miles away from the scene. Though they were eventually acquitted, their imprisonment removed them from directing the day-to-day -day work of the strike. But who was Anna Lopizo? According to Bruce Watson, author of Bread and Roses, Mills, Migrants, and the Struggle for the American Dream, if America had a tomb of the unknown immigrant paying tribute to the millions of immigrants known only to God and distant cousins compiling family trees, Anna Lopizo would become a prime candidate to lie in it. And indeed she was for 88 years until retired IBEW 2321 business manager, David Morris worked to get a headstone decorated with the bread and roses symbol, grain stalks and a rose for her pauper's grave. All right, so we'll open this up. Uh, any any uh, comments, any thoughts that come to mind after going through this history here anyone like to share anything any idea or thoughts just unmute yourself so we can hear you go ahead kathy oh thanks well there i think there's a facebook page called bread and roses and they used to post a lot of interesting stuff about that strike and um the workers they were immigrants and they spoke a lot of different languages, but they would have meetings in the outside, huge meetings. And I think it, it, they might have been in different languages, but, um, you know, it was about people standing together and having solidarity. And um, they were pretty fearless. And it was really, it's inspiring. And one more thing I remember about it was that um, the kids, I think they were trying to, they were uh, putting their children, or not putting, but trying to get their children out of town because they couldn't afford food and things were getting very tense. And I think the police attacked the kids too, the mothers with the kids, I can't remember. Anyway, a very inspiring time of history. Yes. Yes, thank you. And that's really interesting. Do, do you, uh, Kathy, do you, if you could, uh, while we're going through the meeting, if you, if there's a website or a link or something uh, uh, that you're referring to, could you please uh, maybe put it in the chat or something? Sure, I'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. I, and a thought that I had about this um, is that when we're, when I try to look at the past and look at how we can use it, how it relates to the present. And, uh, you know, we've been doing a lot of protests. Uh, we've been part of a lot of protests, Justice Coalition. And um, there we're, there's always police presence, right? You know, um, and it's, it's, it's never been a uh, confrontational thing, but it could turn that way. And, and, you know, we have to really, I, I feel, and we do this well, is that we have to be aware that it could turn against us. Uh, we could be jailed. We could be shot. We could be arrested. Uh, we could be fired. So what, under what conditions does that usually occur? And, whether there's an agent provocateur or a um, or or just some blatant instigator uh, or, or 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 someone who's who's <clears throat> very much against what we're doing tries to get people riled up and 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 get us to fight, get us to do things physical and and that kind of thing, then that's where we end up getting into that category where these types of things can happen. So <clears throat> at this stage, I mean, all revolution has, has, has various levels <laughs> of, uh, of intensity. And, and we are, of course, at a very low intensity. And uh, we are uh, strictly uh, 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 functioning as a nonviolent uh, uh, organization. <clears throat> but uh, again, in history, 
it's not always nonviolence and and not and violence is very much a part of revolution because um when it comes to people who have been uh oppressed and people who've been manipulated uh when they get no justice you're going to have violence eventually and and sometimes it it just happens in little spurts you know you'll have people that snap and um you know we see this uh we saw this happen in uh san jose in in my opinion um a man uh, an atu member um, uh, it wasn't a protest that he was at but there was a union meeting going on <laughs> and uh the president of the union was present and he was uh, very agitated about how uh treatment of the workers was inferior compared to treatment of managers. And uh, minutes later, uh, he took his frustrations and his rage out on his, on his, his co workers and murdered a bunch of them. Um, so, you know, that's an extreme example, but that's not necessarily aren't that's not even about armed revolution either. Okay. But the point is, we have got to always be on guard um, for being set up. Because let's say we have a meeting, right? And, and we meet with coworkers at a break room on the job. And, you know, someone flips out, right? Do, you know, we wanna make sure we don't uh, 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 try, to, try to, we wanna make sure we deescalate these types of things. Cause otherwise then we, if you and me or others are in a break room trying to talk to coworkers and listen to coworkers and, and find solutions and discuss things and then things turn violent or loud, then they can say, oh, we're gonna suspend you for disorderly conduct, you know? And then boom, that's, that's hit on your record. And they try to set us up like that a lot. They set us up like that a lot, especially with the union a lot of union officers, uh, like like when Brother Andre and I were at uh, Kedzie Garage, the Chicago Avenue Garage, you know, the, the union officers would go to the managers and say, hey, man, get those guys out of here. You know, and we just peacefully talking with coworkers, passing out flyers, and 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 they they try to get us riled up, you know, and we just say, all right, all right, you know, they'll be screaming and hollering, and you hear on the intercom, uh, uh, those people better leave or, or they're going to be uh, uh uh put up on charges you know and we're like okay let's just go you know so it's, uh, brother andre you you uh you just uh came in here you you bear witness to what i'm saying right <laughs> yes sir yeah. i had to learn i had to learn the hard way i went to kathy without by myself well not by myself but kathy was outside i was inside and talking to the employees some was scared to talk some wanted to really question me and they called Keith. Keith came in and Keith got in, got in my face and started lying on me saying I was stealing money. It was just a big shout out, not between me and myself and not, not between me and Keith, but Keith with me. And then the other, other employees got riled up and the manager came out and, and gave me a uh, behavior. And she didn't have no paperwork to prove anything that she was saying. She just called my garage. That's how bogus these uh the CTA and the union is, and that's how together they are. Keith set, set that up with uh, the GM over there, Kazi, and I got the behavior. So now I know when I go in the garage, any kind of conflict come up, I'm, a, I'm just going to leave. I'm not going to even uh, get into it or have any debate because I was really trying to debate him back, and he was pointing his finger in my face and saying I was a thief. It was ugly. So they gave me, and you, you know, management don't supposed to interfere with union. Just like they say, we don't supposed to interfere with them, but they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had a contract. It's it's a very con Article two point six is so convenient on everything, you know. Um, so yeah, and and I've had that too. Uh, I was at Howard Street and and uh, uh, Aqua Fisher. Uh, start. I was talking with coworkers. I wasn't even talking with her. And she's a union uh, board member, executive board. And she said, "Oh, you're full of." S H I T and you're 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 the, you know I'm just like oh okay <laughs> and I'm just kind of laughing I'm just like I'm just talking to them and then I had another one J B uh, 
James Brooks, you know, I was talking to some coworkers, giving out some newsletters, and he's like, God, oh, uh, you're lying, you're a liar, you're a liar. Yes. And I'm like, oh, okay, all right. Yeah, just don't be taking down my flyers. That's an unfair labor practice. I, I'm going to take them all. And ah, ah, you know, and, and I just left. You know, I just, you know, as soon as, as soon as the union people start confronting us, we have to leave. Just, it ain't worth it. Because what they do is they use, they abuse their authority to punish us. Even in a union meeting. I had a union, I had a lot, I've been assaulted, had one who was just screaming at me, just screaming at the top of her lungs, you know, and it's just a, okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, let's, let's go to Tom. Come on, brother, talk to us. Uh, good morning. Morning. I just morning, wanted Tom. to, I just want to piggyback over what you were saying, the union in the companies in the bed together yeah they a lot of these rap sessions on their property in lieu of membership meetings so that tells you right there that they're working together mm -hmm. oh isn't that hideous i mean here here we are everyone for those of you who don't know what just happened in local 241 it's outrageous president keith hill has canceled membership meetings due to quote recommendation per the international ATU due to COVID-19 uh, infections. But on the same day that the members of Local 241 are supposed to have their membership meeting, which he canceled, he is having a whole rap session with executive board members at the 103rd Street garage break room. <laughs> So Andre's in 103rd, Nicole's in 103rd, uh, but <laughs> this is outrageous, y'all. So go ahead, Nicole, you got your hand. Oh, hello. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Good morning Nicole. Yeah, yeah, this is outrageous. So you mean to tell me people, members at 103rd are dying from COVID and the CTA will allow Keith Hill to come on the premises and host a rap session with as many members as they can. And they're supposed to have precautions, right? Because COVID is still going on and it is still real. And that's why Keith Hill Council are meeting. So I, I'm going to email customer service tonight before I go to bed and ask them, how is that possible? How and then send, send him the flyer too that Keith yeah. Hill posted up. Yeah, you're gonna let 241 come onto your property and host a union rap session. We got our own building. We pay a lot of money for that building, so we can't access our own building and and conduct social distancing. But we can come on the CTA property and host a rap session. And Absolutely the, not. It's only supposed the, to be 15 people in the garage at a time. And the We're union not. hall, the two, the local 241 meeting room is huge. It's super it's, huge. It's, it's bigger it, it, than the 103rd Street. And, and also, it not only that, when when um, local 240 hosts mass membership meetings, it's at different times, so a, a certain amount of people could be in there at a time. It's all bullshit. It's a ploy for Keith Hill to do what he wants and not have all, the, uh, the whole executive board there at one time to see his shenanigans he got going on. And by the way, by the way, we believe, Brother Andre and I believe, and, and, and Nicole, I'm, I'm sure you probably already figured it out. And, and of course, Tom, everybody here, especially on 241, <laughs> knows that we are holding a protest on that same date at the Union Hall, demanding that Keith Hill have reopened the membership meetings and that Eric Dixon not cancel membership meetings. Because Eric Dixon at 308 threatened to cancel the membership meetings as per recommendation of the international, some crap, you know, for COVID infection. So let's do this in order. We got uh, Tom and then Andre. Go ahead, Tom. Well, what I would suggest the membership do is what I did. I emailed John Costas with a copy of the rap session notice. And I told him, what's the difference between a membership meeting and a rap session meeting? But the COVID only comes to the membership meetings, not the rap sessions. 
I mean, you got to do something. You got to notify him at least. Yep. Thank you for doing that, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Andre, go ahead. And uh, my belief is that this is all about making sure the membership don't have no democratic process, no power. Because if you come to that union meeting, that's your power. You know, so Keith don't want members to have power. There is no power in a rap session. Uh, there's protection from him for any hostilities uh, uh, on a CTA property with the rap session, with all the managers sitting in their office or sitting around walking back and forth. Keith is totally protected, and he can make sure that the, the Negroes stay in line, you know, because they're not, who's going to holler? We can't holler, can't cuss them out. But you, at the union meeting, you can do all that. You can get out of order. You can uh, make a motion. Yeah. You can do all that. That's, that stuff at the garage, it doesn't mean a damn thing for the membership. It ain't number a lot of lip service. Yes. And we got, that's why members, uh, brothers and yeah. sisters, local 308, local 241, the membership meeting is not just a union meeting. It is the membership meeting. It is your meeting, your meeting. That means you run it. And the president is merely a chair. He's like a moderator. He's like a coach <laughs> to try to keep the issues moving, to keep the meeting moving forward, making sure there's debate, making sure people's questions are answered. Not, not to tell them, you're out of order. You're out of order. You're out of order. You're out of order. Uh, I'm not going to take this. I'm going to adjourn the meeting. I don't like what you're saying. Nah, 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 nah. You know, no, no, it's your meeting. And when you, mm -hmm. when it's your meeting, you can actually democratically direct your own union. Everyone is like, let's opt out of staying. Let's stop paying dues and let's, okay, fine. But when you do that, you have no power in the meeting to vote. So when we, when we build and we have members who are building up numbers in the meeting, then you will have a democratic will. And we did that in Local 308 recently. And we've done it, you know what I mean? And we won certain things for the members. But when, when, we, when we don't participate in our meeting, and we don't take control of our membership meeting, or the president takes away the membership meeting, we lose as a union, we lose. Okay, uh, Brother Tom, go ahead. Yeah, I want to add one more thing. We haven't seen any financial statements or reports in over a year from these officers. So we don't know what they're doing with our money, how they're spending it. Uh, this is all a bunch of nonsense, these rap sessions. It is. It is. Let's see what he presents at the rap session. Will there be a financial statement? Nah, these, rap, <laughs> these, these rap sessions are campaigning and yeah. trying to sell this contract. That's all. And and the local 241 elections are are this at the end of the year, basically, or or at least in the summer, if not in, in the winter. They're just they're just trying to campaign because they're not looking too good right now with this vaccination policy and all this. A lot of people are upset. Yep, rightfully so. Rightfully so. Stop punishing people who aren't vaccinated. Stop punishing them with the loss of their job. It's disgusting. It's immoral. I, I mean, I've been vaccinated. Brother Andre and Kathy did it. We did it. We chose to do it. We, we, yeah, we I, I did too. You did it, Tom? And, yes. Did it. But, but now they're bribing people. Oh, we'll pay you four hours for each shot. What about everybody that already took it? We deserve four hours paid in, don't we? Yeah, they but they're saying together. they're saying they're not going to give it out retroactively. It's a bunch of nonsense. Yeah, yeah, they told us that in the three hundred eight uh, member meeting too. It's like it's crap. They're pitting us against each other, and you know, like I went and did it while I was on my paid vacation because I was worried I would get, I might get <laughs> sick while I'm working. I'd, I'd miss work. You know, it's it's just disgusting. It's just it's immoral. Go ahead, Nicole. Well, yeah, I'm glad we brought up the vaccination because uh, at the meeting that we have on Tuesday at the rap session, I'm gonna bring up why did not Keith Hill did not bring before he went to arbitration allegedly? Why did he bring it to a vote to the members? Because I see that the CPD is standing up to him, and and now they having meetings discussing 
on-site tr- uh, testing and everything. But why did they came to uh, CTA? I'm going to bring that up. Good. And, and, and we did, too, at 308, and Eric Dixon refused to answer why. I asked him, why didn't you give it to us? If we should have decided it before you gave it to that freaking moderator, uh, uh, arbitrator. You know. Right, they just want to bully us. Yeah, let us decide what we want to do, how we want to deal with this. Not you. You're not God. Think They think they're God. Barely a president. Yeah, the boss. The boss. Boss Dixon. Urgh. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Andre. Well, this is the this is the thing. This is what we got to accept. So uh, this is what we got to not accept. They just stealing our union from us. You know, you know, we supposed to have all these rights, but they stealing them away from us. So what we have to do as a membership, we have to fight the theft. We have to fight the theft. We have to talk to each other. We have to resist what's happening to us. You know, our constitutional rights are being stolen from us. We're being enslaved. And that's what's happening. I agree. I agree. And this is it. You, you know, sisters and brothers, you really need to get to know other workers and other unions and visit with them and check out their meetings or or do other things because I'm telling you, you know, it what we're going through is not exceptional. It, it it's happening in other places, right? But you know, this is bad. Okay, we have nothing. Our our leadership keeps us on a leash and they keep us ignorant. Okay. And when we do stuff like this meeting and we do protests and we do training and all kinds of stuff and sharing information, they hate that. They should be right with us if they care, but they don't because we share. Go ahead, brother Tom. Yeah, but um, I think the membership should be contacting the international because that way they can't say they don't know what's going on here. Okay, thank you. Uh, and the the I, I I agree with Tom too. Also on that point. Yeah, because everybody just doing what he wants to do, and by the time the international comes in, they'll say, "Well, we didn't know." Well, yes, you did, because we notified you. Yeah, about this crap. <laughs> we need a paper trail, y'all. You're like, they don't listen. They do what they want. But still, put in your paper trail. Put in your paper trail. Always put in your paper trail. And, and thank you, everyone. Let's um let's jump to the next session. So we're going to get into our training session. Um, so uh, in the agenda, we have a link for Secrets of a Successful Organizer. Uh, we put these. This is the book. Okay, so uh, you can get the book at labornotes.org or you can just follow along here. So the next, uh, we're, we're, when it comes to organizing, the next topic is called get specific. When we're organizing with our coworkers, we need to choose a manageable task at least to start off with, right? Help, help your coworkers solve their problems. Don't solve their problems, help them. How do we do that? Each of us, <clears throat> ask your coworkers to take a specific action. Choose a manageable task. Don't make it seem like an open-ended commitment. Be clear about how much time it will take, why you're doing it, and how it fits into the overall plan. Here's an unproductive approach. A few of us are carrying the whole burden and doing everything in the union or in the organization, right? Like the Justice Coalition. We need you to get involved. This request has the added disadvantage of being a guilt trip. Always wanna do that. Avoid that guilt trip. What's a better way? We're trying to reach 200 people about the dangerous temperatures in the plant lately. Can you be a part of the phone bank next Tuesday or Wednesday night? This request defines the task, make calls, the time, Tuesday or Wednesday, the goal, reach 200 people, and the issue, dangerous temperatures. If this coworker had never phone banked before, 
you could improve the request further by explaining what to expect. A few of us will sit together for two hours and call our coworkers. You'll have a list of phone numbers and a loose script to help you along, including three questions we're asking everybody. Afterwards, we'll tally the answers and discuss what we learned. And when it, when it comes to, here's a little tip about making signs from scratch. When you're planning a picket, hold a sign making party ahead of time. A party will bring members together. Let them discuss the boss's latest outrage and encourage them to show their creativity. The sign makers will be proud of their signs and will show up to, to picket. And some of the worst things we could do is tell people, that's not a good sign. Never tell nobody that. Oh, we're not gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about this. And that's what they do with Local 308. They, I made signs and they, they refused. They're like, no, no, we don't like those signs because my sign says something about full-time jobs or stuff. You know, and they're like, no, 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 it has to be about safety. You know, it's, it's just, don't control people. Let people express themselves. If they wanna use a pencil, <laughs> You know, let them let them express themselves. Now, uh, let's see. I think, uh, yeah. So, what do y'all what do y'all think of uh, that? Uh, you know, these pages are out of order. I'm sorry, that was lesson eleven, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's relevant. So, what do y'all think of that? Any any comments? Any thoughts? I think that's the way it's is in the real world when you got uh real things going on with people but this world it's a little more difficult it sounds it sounds simple enough but it's a little harder over here in this local 241 and local 308 with the cta to get those achievements done they can be done but you see how difficult it is you know we got union officials uh, the CTA making everything that we do as a small group that we are difficult. I mean, can you imagine being a member and looking at looking at what I go through and what you have been through at the property? I mean, it was a it was a bus it was a bus full bus room full of bus operators when they hollered out at you. This is the guy that uh, keep y'all from going to the bathroom. I mean, it had to be at least 50 people up in there that, that day. And this is coming from the union official. Yeah. And then you get over the intercom. Hey, uh, if y'all take any of them things, y'all going to get rolled up. This is coming over the intercom. So it's really difficult for the task that we have been doing. But we have to keep doing it. We have to try to keep each other safe, like uh, the discussions we had with each other. And I decided I'm not going to do that protest, that flash protest, because I decided the, that's not important. What's important is that we get down local 241 office on Tuesday and take our pictures and have our interviews and do our thing. Yes, very. very. So I'm going to let them do their thing. Yeah. yeah. Their party, brother. Let them have their party at 103rd. Let them have their little... And hopefully, some, and hopefully somebody at 103rd will record what Keith say. I don't know. I wish I wish I could send somebody, but you know I don't know. I don't know who I can we can, can get to do that because they're gonna be so afraid of anybody that's trying to do anything. <laughs> Nicole's gonna be there, so go ahead, Nicole. Oh yeah, I just want to share this. You know, I think this is a great lesson, and I and I was gonna share this experience later, but you know, I think that just as this lesson is teaching us, that is really how it's going on. Even though we don't see it all the time, I'm gonna share this with you. I have a lot of family who work for CTA. Now, it was it was surprising to me the other day. My aunt called me and she said, well, she says, Nikki, I see you very involved in the union. I was like, not so much, just a little bit. And she said, well, I saw you on that Cheryl Sistron show and I was so <laughs> proud of you. So, you know, it's like everybody is not everybody don't act like we act. Not that we act bad, but as vocal and strong, <laughs> strong as we are. They might be building up their confidence to come around a little bit later. So I think that we're doing a great job in the way we're doing. Just as taught in this lesson, it's all going to prevail sooner or later. I just think it just takes time. So I just thought I'd share that. This lesson is spot on. Exactly. And I'll be at the meet, and I'll definitely be at the meeting at 103rd. Don't worry about it. 
Exactly. Thank you. And and you know, Nicole, try to. Nicole, try to record it if you can. Well, I mean, you, you already can. know they're going to be trying to watch me. They ain't going to say too much anyway. That's okay, but I but it's, my best. it's not illegal. I it's, know. It's not illegal. I Tell know. them to you in writing if you can't use your cell phone record in the training room. Well, first it's of all, it shouldn't be a meeting on CCA property anyway. Uh, sanctioned. So I'm not worried about it no way. I'm not scared. You know that. Okay. No. Ten four. It, and yeah, they don't even... Need- they don't even need to. I mean, what you got? What are they going to search you and then look at your phone? Who is it recording? Ooh. They're not going to look at my right. phone, Eric. Right, exactly. It's your personal. It's your personal property. I mean, Keith Hill. That's should, an assault. Keith Hill, boss Hill needs should know by now dealing with Nicole. He better not <laughs> try to touch. Right. <laughs> He's definitely not, guys. Don't worry about. It. That's why I'm not worried about. No one saying nothing to me about that. Yeah, Nicole's like. Untouchable. So, <laughs> Nicole, what time you go on your break? Uh, Dre, I can't. I, I'm gonna plead the fifth on that. I'll be at the meeting. That's all I can tell you. Oh, okay, ten four. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Nicole, for not answering his question, Andre. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 um, I did want to say something about uh this too. Is I've told people co-workers that it's like we don't have a union so we really got to start from scratch so it's just us the workers we can't count on our, our our the elected persons in the union office right we can't count on them to help us be militant to help us fight back we just gotta come together and do what we can you know what we're able to do and 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 it, it's like making a brand new union you know, because it's like we don't have one. You know what I'm saying? We really don't. If we have like a another l- level of management that's it's a little more beneficent, you know, or 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 benevolent. <clears throat> Still dictators, but benevolent dictators, right? As opposed to cruel dictatorship, right? You know, they'll say, well, it's you know, and then they'll make a deal, you know, and, and maybe sell this person out or this. Guy. <laughs> Care of the other people. Um, so let's uh, look at this. Uh, good. So as far as making signs, uh, October fifth at eleven a.m. We're meeting at Sixteenth in Michigan at eleven at Sixteenth in Michigan. Bring a sign about anything you want. We're basically the theme is we're going to take back our union. So local 241, local 308, ATU, the members, the workers want to take it over. Uh, it's very symbolic, of course, uh, but, but bring a sign about what you believe in, you know, what you think is, is, needs to be out there. But the, again, the theme that we're focusing, though, on is not taking away our membership meeting, not taking away our rights to democratically uh, uh, direct our union. Okay? Um, Let's uh, move on to the next item in the agenda. I'm trying to, my, my window here is like full of pallets. Um, so, go up to the top. So, we got introductions. Uh, you know, we're recording. Uh, so, Let's just do some uh, introductions. And when you, when you introduce yourself, uh, feel free to share any thoughts, any initiatives that you would like to work on or any updates that you have for us. My name is uh, Brother Eric Basir. I'm a, I'm a rail car repairer at a Howard shop, uh, union steward at Local 308. I uh, wanna say, I, I, the only thing I have, Sister Cheryl Sister had a wonderful uh, show on Friday, and she just really exposed the corruption of, of it within Local 308 and, 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 and put the leadership on blast, which and, and holding them accountable. I'm so proud of her. I always am proud of what she does. And I love for more worker co workers to stand. Brother Andre, you can I'm Andre Thompson, out of 103rd Street Garage, bus operator, member of the Justice Coalition. 
yeah. <laughs> I watched this show, uh, show too, and I think it's great. And I agree with what you said again. about we don't have a union. I, I agree with that 100%. I think the members just got to, we all here, uh, we just got to step our games up, continue to talk to our coworkers and get people to be encouraged to fight for their rights. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, brother Janice. Or brother Janice. Sister Janice. Look <laughs> at brother Andre's name. I'm muting him. And <laughs> go ahead. Sister Janice. Yeah. Okay. This is Willette. Oh, Willette. Welcome. Yeah. I couldn't get in, so I had to go through Janice again. Okay. Uh, I'm Willette. I'm a CSA. Going on nine years. And really just disheartened with everything that's going on. Okay, and listening to everyone, it takes it takes definitely all of us to get more of us to come together so we can accomplish some things. And you said also, Eric, you were interested in anything that we have to bring up. Would you like for me to bring up the um, in uh, person meeting, or are we going to do that later? Well, since you're here and you've been having trouble getting in, and and I see Janice sometimes drops out. Let's let's get whatever information out. That yeah, 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 definitely. So well, the in person, that's what you want to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, please go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, okay. I've I've uh, we've went to this, well, we've contacted several different places, and uh, we want to know what the uh, team would feel that's feasible. Okay, I went uh, as far as Golden Corral, that's really out of our, you know, as far as our reach for all of us to, you know, make it there. Now, there's an original pancake house at 1358 East 47. There's a Culver's at 4939 West Irving and 3355 South Martin Luther King Drive. There's a Giordano's at 815 West Van Buren, 5159 South Pulaski, 1340 South Michigan. There's a Home Run Inn at 3401 South Martin Luther King Drive, 4254 West 31st. There's a Famous Days at North Riverside, in North Riverside rather, 4100 South Pulaski, 2016 West Pershing. We try to encompass, you know, the different areas for different people. So, you know, whatever you all would decide on, then we would check it out. Wow. Okay. Uh, Nicole's got a, I think she's got a question for you. No. Uh, hey, Willette, how you doing, honey? No, I didn't have a question. Like, I was just thinking, why don't you guys decide and we'll all just show up? Because to put all of us to think to say which is which location, you guys just pick a place we're going to show up. Okay, that's I, good. That's okay with me. If that's okay with everyone else. Yeah, I, I have no... I, thank you, by the way, uh, Willie. This is awesome. I mean, the... The places. Wow! Yeah, people all said located in different types of establishments, and it's just like, oh God, I don't know. Let's go to all of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I'm on one. Does anybody object to that? Does anyone have a preference? Of, of, she mentioned, speak up, please. The thirteen, cool. the thirteen hundred, the thirteen hundred, the thirteen uh, south, which it seems like more central located. I don't know what which one that was, but the thirteen hundred like south. Yeah, I like that. I, I agree with that central location. That's thirteen fifty eight east forty seven. Thirteen fifty eight east forty seven. I like the 1300. It's, it's okay, no. but we're agreeing on 1357, right? East, East 47. I think 1300, we had a 1340 South Michigan. Oh, that's the one I'm talking about, the 1340 South Michigan. Yeah, that's the one I'm talking I, I like that location. 1300 South Michigan. Thir yeah. 
Cause it's a great uh, outdoor. Okay, so they got a a, a balcony, whatever you call that, uh, rooftop. Okay, thirteen forty government, right? Yeah. What is called? What's it called? Can you tell? Me? So I can't even understand. Can you? Can you please? Can you? Can you please confirm the name of the place at 1340 South Michigan? Paragonos. Thank you. Uh huh. Got it. <laughs> Does anybody object? Please say something. <laughs> Great. Wonderful. So let's continue with the introductions. We have Janice and, and uh, we got Willette. Uh, so, so Janice, how about you? Anything you'd like to share? Uh, nothing to share. Okay. And hey, so 1340 Michigan Giordano is a sign? Yes. Yes. Thank you. And that is, you guys, that October 17th now. Hey, what time? October 17th. What time? That's it. Uh, was that 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock, Jan? I don't know. 1 o'clock? 12 sounds good. 12 o'clock? Are they 12 open at 12? Good. Yeah. Okay. What time is it? 12. 12 o'clock? Okay. 12 o'clock. All right. October 17th, 12 o'clock. Here's Arnold, 1340 South Michigan. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, so we have, uh, we got, we got Nicole. Nicole, did you, uh, did you want to, introduce yourself did you have anything oh, well, sure i'll definitely introduce myself hi guys i'm nicole williams i'm a bus operator at 103rd street garage and guess what today marks 22 years full-time for me um two years part-time well uh, one thing i want to say is that i'm big on safety and i'm working on something that uh maybe a protest a flash protest about safety and I'm not sure where I want to do it. And maybe I want to do it at the union office because I think that that's where my safety is in jeopardy yet. So maybe I'll do it there, but I'll let you guys know. But anyway, let's move on. Cheryl had a great show. I was, oh, overjoyed. I just laughed the whole time. You know, everybody's stepping up in their own way. And I just appreciate each and every one of you guys. That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Tom, uh Introduce yourself and any thoughts. You might be uh, shopping or something. Uh, yeah, uh, Tom Colangelo, Forrest Glenn. Uh, my thought is we got to get the ATU out of here. That's all. Yeah, it's it sucks. <laughs> I'm not telling you. I I've been with them 22 years, different local, two different locals. They're terrible. It is. I'm I'm getting, I'm I'm just I I have whatever they offer is great, whatever, fine, but it is not worth it. The money we pay, um, it's like we're on our own. They abandoned the entire all the locals when the pandemic uh, i mean this is not a this is not a union it's a social club and if you're not in the social club you get shit on yeah yeah i agree with him 100 percent on that yeah eric when you go to the convention you're gonna see that yeah i'm, I'm not looking forward to it at all <laughs> i'll probably end up going just uh just to, to help you with your vision <laughs> we're gonna make videos and all kinds of stuff, these crappy guys. <laughs> oh my god. Go ahead, go. Oh yeah, I think let me know what it is. I think I'm gonna go just to hang with you guys. I like y'all so much. I wanna hang and support you guys. I'll pay my own. You'll way. be you, oh, oh, I'm sorry. 
you have a right to go as a guest. And so they, they're going to give you a little pass and everything, but you got you go to the union and that way you get uh, credentials. You just have guest credentials. So, you know, the union ain't going to like that, but we have a right. So well, we I'm all, we all going to, anybody who want to go get the guest credentials from the local union and you get a discount or whatever they is, they offering whatever. Uh, What'd you say, aren't, we having, aren't they supposed to have delegate elections this year? Yeah. Uh, no, they're going to have it next year. Okay, I know. Right before the convention. The convention is uh, October, somewhere in October 2022, and they're going to have a delegate conv uh, election. So if I win, if we win, then we can go for free. But if we don't, I'm not concerned about winning or losing. I'm just going to go. And I want my rights exercised as a guest. And if they deny that, I'm still just gonna go and jump on a plane and be part and, and, and just be out there because they can't stop you from going to the you know to the area. The delegate election is after the general election, right? It's gonna be before the general election. It should okay. be if they have the winter. I, that's what I gotta find out if they're having the winter cycle or the summer cycle for the general election. Because we we've been on the winter the winter cycle. So I want to know if we still are on the winter cycle, because when we got trustee, we only did two 24 months that threw the cycle back. And now the cycle should be back on the summer cycle. It should be. But I can't I can't prove that to you 100 percent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, let's look at. Uh, um, I mute, brother. You are noisy. You got a lot of feedback. So when you're ready to talk, you can just unmute yourself. That's fine. Um, okay. So uh, okay, okay. Sunday. So we were going to do a protest. We we're going to help support uh, some CSAs at uh, the CSAs at uh, uh, at Fullerton Station um, uh, uh, today. Uh, but uh, the sister that's organizing it uh, had to postpone with because she just had a scheduling conflict that popped up. Um, but she wants to do it next Sunday. So we're looking at uh, a one o'clock protest uh, next Sunday at the Fullerton Red Line. It's, it's Red, Purple, Brown Line Station uh, at one o'clock. Um, we're basically we're as as an as a, as one of the co-organizers. I'm 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 helping her out. We're supporting her, but it, it's not you know it's this is her thing. So we, it's I'm not sure how she wants to promote it, um, you know. But I'm just sharing that with with you all that uh, if you can like pencil in one or one thirty uh, next Sunday at Fullerton Station for a protest. Uh, her, her themes will be hazard pay, uh, I think full-time jobs and other things. Uh, this will be her first time doing something like this. So we wanna uh, just let her do, do the way she wants to do it and we'll just be there to support. Um, Nicole, go ahead, or, or no, Kathy, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to introduce myself. I'm Kathy Strelecki, retired switchman, 34 years, and also congratulations to Nicole on those 22 years. And I wanted to um, ask a question about those about the rap session, comment and question. I agree with what Tom said. They're nothing more than um, an organizing thing for Keith for, for running for office and to get people to uh, support and vote for the contract. I'm thinking he probably is gonna go to other stations. It would be, I mean, garages. It'd be kind of stupid not to, if he wants to reach the members in a very controlled setting. So maybe at some point there would be a leaflet about, uh, or maybe there already is one about the contract, why we should vote it down. And, we could start going to the garages as well. I know it's not easy because people are working, but uh, that's where the drivers are gonna be. So that's all. Thank you. Um, thank you. And sorry, I missed you. I didn't call on you for the introductions. I apologize for that. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I was going to show a speech. I should have got the video ready ahead of time. Uh, International President John Costa spoke at the Transport Workers Union Convention uh, this this uh, last month or this year, or whatever. Yeah, it was last month, and uh, it was kind of you know very emotional speech. Uh, dropped a lot of f bombs about the employers, but you know it's like good speeches. They're a dime a dozen, you know. But organizing the workers to fight back and use their weapon, really their only weapon, um, he fails. I mean, John Costa, I'm very disappointed in you if you're watching this video. You need to step it up, brother. Um, <clears throat> we aren't here to work with politicians. We're here to work with workers. These politicians are not going to give us what we want because we endorse them. It'll never happen. Um, so let's talk about the unjustly fired worker protest uh, at Wednesday uh, at Chicago Avenue Garage. Some of you were there. Um, what'd y'all think? Maybe uh, I'll start. I'll start and say I loved it. Uh, Brother Eric uh, Strzok, he's, a, he's another co-organizer in the Justice Coalition. He is a founder of our newsletter, finally got the news. Speaking of which, newsletter, um, I have copies here. So if any of y'all want to distribute this thing, let me know. I can, I can mail a stack to you. I can, uh, I can try to give it to you, meet you. Let me know. Um, we'll let Janice, Nicole, uh, Tom, let me know. I'll print out a bunch and send them to you. And, and just pass them out in break rooms or, or you know, that kind of thing. Um, but the protest was really, really good. Uh, Brother Eric made some really cool signs and um, we did a little video. It's, it's, it's on, um, right now it's just on Facebook. It's not on our YouTube channel, but it's public <clears throat> on Facebook. Uh, the cops were there, the police, the managers were there, supervisors were there. It was all peaceful. I couldn't stay too long, but more people came after I left. Uh, Brother Eric has been uh, uh, basically uh, uh, blocked out of, of being able to work and had trouble getting sick pay or, for an injury. This is a big mess, you know, and he's being retaliated against basically because President uh, Hill doesn't like him. And we're trying to tell President Hill, you can't do that, man. You know, that ain't right. You got to help this brother get get his get his uh, full time status and a good job, you know. Anybody have any comments about the protests on Wednesday? Any questions, comments? I think the protest was great. This is Andre. I think it put a lot of pressure on the on the CTA and the board members that work there. Uh, it's it looked real ugly when the members are stepping up like they are and the board members haven't done nothing since they've been in office. And, you know, the managers was on pins and needles because I went in the bathroom. They came out trying to tell me that I can't have them people come in the garage. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm just coming to use the bathroom because they were trying to say I couldn't be up in there first. I'm in full uniform. You know, that lets you know how scared management is. But, you know, I didn't let them scare me. Let them, I made them give me a mask. Let, and I went in the bathroom, came out, then I was, the, a message was delivered to me by an, an instructor from the GM saying, the GM said that you can't tell, you can't have them people come in the garage. I'm like, man, I don't know what you're talking about, and left. <laughs> so it was great. It was fun. It, it was so you know, watch everybody squeal and sweat. Yeah. And what's outrageous? We had, a, we had a Labor Day protest at the garage at the same place. And they, what I think is the key, they don't call the GM and the, yeah, they're going to send a bunch of GM. Okay, let me, uh, let me mute you there, Andre, uh, and go with, uh, we got Nicole and then Kathy. Go ahead, Nicole. Okay, I, I, I saw the, I didn't, I didn't know about the protest, but I thought it was great. I think it brings awareness to CTA about the way they treat his, their members. And I think it brings attention to the union, how they don't fight for it. And then more people see it and they be like, well, look, if they don't fight for him, 
I know they ain't gonna fight for me, so I better step up and join in with them. So I think it brings a lot of awareness and makes uh, the current administration look horrible to the to the members. More protests, I, you know, I have to agree with Eric. He always say we have to protest, and I don't care if it's like one or two people. It brings attention to situations. Protest is everything we have to do. Uh, we still have to keep a paper trail, but protest is our best form of uh, fighting back against the union and CTA, in my opinion. And, and fighting back against the elected tyrants in, in the union, because we are the union. Uh, well, yeah, we need to take this back by more protests. I yeah, thank you. And and by the way, uh, uh, it was kind of short notice. Everything was short notice. Uh, promoting it, we, we only had like a couple of days. So I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. I, you know, I was there in spirit because you know I wanted to be there, but I felt every everything that was said there. I I, I want to support everything, especially Eric, because then you know that Keith Hill, he just out of control. He thinks he owns this union. He can do whatever he wants. Again, I will say he assaulted me, and I will say allegedly CTA covered it up. So you know, safety and jobs is very important to me because they tried to take man away. Uh, I was assaulted by the president of Local 241, and you know, I stand with any member for their cause because they stand with me. That's right, Seth. And by the way, for, as far as protests go, um, they can be anywhere, shared public property. A lot of people will tell me after they say, yes, yeah, aside the protest that you were in, or, or oh, when I, when I invite them, they say, no, you need to protest at 567. You need to protest. I said, okay, let's do it. Where, when, what date? You know, this protest, you know, we are so indoctrinated into thinking some dude at the top of some kind of God or king or, or leader has to tell us where to protest. Anybody, the point of this is anybody anywhere can protest. It is your right. And organize it in the Justice Coalition. We'll back you up. If you want to organize a protest at 567, do it. The next hour of power, 567 is way down on the ranking. People aren't interested. The majority of people are not interested in protesting at 567, according to our poll. So, and that's in the agenda, by the way. You know, so if people, if, if 567 is the top on the poll, then that's where we go. We go where the members want to go. And if you want to protest at 567 or City Hall or whatever, or the Shed Aquarium, then, then make it happen and we'll, we'll, we'll support you, you know. <laughs> Sister Kathy, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so I was at the protest and um, it was a good protest. People who were driving by, I don't think they were all CTA workers. A lot of people were honking um, in support of uh, seeing workers out there taking a stand and fighting back. And I talked to an operator. I introduced him to Andre, but now I forgot the guy's name. But I had a sign that said, the CTA will only agree to a contract if it benefits the CTA or unless it benefits the CTA. And um, this guy said, yeah, he thinks all the unions are like that. And he used to be a steel worker and in that union. So anyway, it was, it was good, and um, I agree. Demonstrations, we need more of them. Uh, and you guys are doing a good thing. And, and thank you, Kathy. You, you've been a, a supporter. You've been a, a, on the vanguard of the retirees. And uh, you saw that article that I wrote on my blog that, that retirees need to step up. You know, y'all, those of you who are retired or about to retire, you think your money is safe? You think your pay is guaranteed? it's not <laughs> and and it, it, that pension is fresh meat uh, uh for the blood suckers of the poor okay and and you are vulnerable so retirees you need to step it up organize join with us do something help the new people you know do something and and more of y'all and don't fight us you know, we got some retirees out here that are like fighting us it's like for what you know we're the enemy because what we believe the members should control the union and you're pissed off that uh the way you did things is not so efficient anymore don't take it personal it's time to evolve uh let's see i think we have tom and then nicole 
Go ahead, Tom. Just unmute yourself. Maybe, maybe Tom didn't have his hand up. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. okay. A lot of these retirees are taken care of by these union officials. They give them special duties and put them on the payroll. Like 241 has a bylaw in there now saying that they can pay them to help out at the union. That's why they kiss these people's butts. <laughs> Damn, Tom. <laughs> Forgot about that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, brother. Go ahead, uh, Nicole and then Andre. Oh, well, yeah, you know, speaking of the retirees, you know, maybe we can reach some retirees. Retirees have a breakfast once a month. Maybe we'll join them one time or another and try to spread along our information. It's good because they only hear one side of things. Maybe they need to hear our side. Yes, 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 yes. I love that. He puts up the yeah. Mute you, man. Your feet, the feedback is bad. Uh, but I'll unmute you in a second. Um the um when I was at the barbecue. Some of the retirees uh, recognized me. I didn't recognize them, and they were talking to me, you know, and like, yeah, yeah, you know, the union president, you know, you elect me, you know, if you don't like things, you got to elect a new president. I'm like, no, no, if you don't elect, if you don't like things, you you change them. <laughs> you don't wait three years, you know, and they they were very, you know, well, what do you think needs to be done? I said, what I think needs to be done is that the members need to collectively decide what we're gonna do. See, and they're trying to get me to say like. I have this great plan. And this, all we got to do is we're going to do this and we do that. And then they'll say, oh, yeah, we already tried that. You see what I mean? And it's like, even if we did, it doesn't matter. If with the members, let the members debate, come up with solutions and debate and build a great, powerful solution because of the debate. And if they lose, then they lose together. And then they say, let's go back to the drawing board and try again. That's democracy in a union. Go ahead, brother Andre. See, unmute you. Andre, uh, I'm trying to unmute you. There you I came go. in late on the conversation a little bit. It sounded like you were saying something about the technology and what the union is doing is keeping us in a stone age on purpose. You know, they don't want to bring up, bring us into the 21st century. They don't want to do nothing that. And it's a lot of efficient ways that things can uh, make things to make this into a real union. But that's never going to take place with the union officials that's in, that's in the office because the only thing they care about is their perks, uh, their relationship with management. And for all the retirees, yeah, the retirees, they come out and run game on employees because, you know, you got the Jefferson administration on the payroll now. Michael Taylor, Michael Seed, and all of them come in. People don't know when. But they come in and get go down, do some office duties, or get Jefferson down there, Michael Simmons, him, him off and on, Mike, uh, Lonnie Walken, all these people deep getting paid in the union. You got those uh those uh women from the court, whatever, whatever they call them, the women's caucus group. I get I get I guess that's what this is called. They all come down so they can get a free ride to the international convention. And that's all they really want. $250 donation or a plane ticket or a room. And that's what they, and they don't care nothing about the members. You know, these ladies that's in their caucus, they like 99 years old and they don't care nothing about no membership. They want to be able to go on the casino boat and, and use whatever money they can get from the union. That's why I keep having them down there. Every month, you have these two, two retirees come down there and they get so comfortable, they think they can vote sometime. And they have to be reminded, you can't vote. So if we get, yeah, I think I, I, I agree with Nicole's idea. I think that's a great idea to go out and start just talking to retirees at these lunches because it's four of them a month. So we just got to find out which one. I just know about the old country buffet one. I mean, not the old country buffet, but the other one on 159th. And that's the biggest one. You might have 80 people there. Uh, I don't know if it's still in play from COVID because I know it was canceled because of COVID, but I think they started back meeting. Thank you. So that's all I got to say. Thank you. And, and put your hand up and it went down so i want you to call on you um but um uh the, the 
and local 308, um, we have this issue too. So what, what I tried to do is I tried to get uh, to, to view payroll um, and uh, Secretary Deborah Lane was kind of tricky and she just gave me the payroll numbers. And I was like, yeah, but, but who's getting the money? And she said, well, you didn't ask for that. I'm like, oh, okay. So make sure members in local 308, local 241, when you get the payroll report at the union office, that you, you ask that it lists the names of the people who are being paid. And that way we can say, okay, is this person uh, working or are they retired? You know, and, and look at all that. And, and that way you could scrutinize it. Um, let, me, let me just call on Jan real quick. Jan, you had your hand up. Did you, did you wanna say something? No, I, I, ch I changed my mind. I'll hold it. It, it can be held. Go continue on what you're talking about. Oh, okay. Uh, we, got, we got Nicole and then Tom. Oh, I want to say, you know, when reaching out, when members talk to me and they ask me, you know, say stuff like, oh, you should run for you. I said, no, no, maybe you should run for the union. And I was like, because my thing is, it's not what, who we want to put in office is what we're going to do together. So my thing is, uh, when if we meet with the retirees, my slogan to them is like, so how can you change the uh, union? I'd be like, well, how can we change the union since we are, since the members are the union? It's not what one person can do; it's what a whole membership can do. And if we get that message out, I think that kind of hit a little bit home and like, because it, it can, it's not one person; it's a whole membership. It's all the members that make up the union. So as a whole, we can do a lot, but as one or two, we cannot. So that's why we have to take the union back from these one and two, three officers that think they run it. Yes. And and it's really important that um, we have the candidate questionnaire. We have got to form a slate of candidates, though, because Keith Hill has canceled the union meetings, right? The membership meetings. He's canceled all meetings there. So now... What that does is that makes the local 241 members totally uh, disempowered, right? Disenfranchised. So we, we got to step it up with a slate. We need a justice coalition slate of candidates for the next local 241 election. We need some standby candidates for the um, local 308 interim because we're going to have people that, that quit, right, in local 308. We got still two more years to a general. We need to build a slate. So I need everybody on this call um, and everyone listening. Don't think you're not qualified. I don't care if you, if you work for two years, that's all you need is to be a member for two years. You can run for office. Not that you're gonna run yourself, not that you're gonna nominate yourself, fine. Cause I don't believe in doing that myself personally. Okay, but people do it and that's fine. But we need to build people. We need a list of people who are willing to, 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 to help in this regard. I put my name in the, I've got my name in the forum, a candidate forum questionnaire. I'm like, fine, whatever people nominate me for is fine. Uh, but we need other people, you too, uh, Jan and, 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 and Nicole, uh, Tom, you know, stop saying you can't or you won't. Just fill out the damn questionnaire. We're just trying to make a slate, okay? We may not win because we're too militant. We're too unknown, okay? But at least we should try and build up for it. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, I wanted to uh, make a comment about uh, Sister Cheryl's show. She made a comment about they went on a golfing trip. Right. And uh, with active members, is that correct? Yeah. Now, you do know you can do a FOIA request to see what days the union has taken these people off their jobs. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Because yeah, I've, I've done it a couple of times already. So yeah, that's just wanted to pass stuff. that information on. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And you did send me some and asked me to send to Cheryl. I, uh, I didn't do that yet. I forgot. Um, days off uh, FOIA. Yeah because the CTA has, they got to keep records of whenever the union office pulls people off their job, you know, 
to go to because the usually when they pull them off their job they have to pay them those lost wages for the days that they're off i don't see these people being off for free right yeah that's really good thank you thank you uh tom uh anybody else wanted to have any comments uh anything else anybody else okay so we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up um again look at your agenda or or go to uh let me just show you right here everybody who's watching this i want you to go to chicagotransitworker.com all right and I want you to go to something called uh, Union Reformation. And I want you to go to, because we got a lot of Justice Justice Coalition members. They're on they're, 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 they're on our, we got a Facebook group. But everybody that's sympathetic with what we're doing, even if you're not considered, if you don't consider yourself a member of our coalition, but you're sympathetic, with revolutionary unionism and union democracy. I want you to go to that union reformation button and click on candidate survey. All right. And I want you to fill that out. Now, if you are, if you are, even if you're not want to be associated with the coalition, you know, oh, I have to show the results. But anyways, just go there, click it, fill it out. We need people to participate. Please, everybody on this call, everyone who's listening, everyone who's watching fill out that candidate survey, especially Local 241. We need to reform Local 241. If we can't make Local 241 a democratic union, whatever we do in Local 308 will ultimately fail. That, that means if we fill Local 308 with all militant people, who love union democracy and love the members and, and believe in accountability and make membership meetings all online and voting online and everything you love, all the conveniences, we still will never win with Local 241 being a sellout, uh, a company union, okay? So we've got to reform it. We also are working on other things too if we cannot uh, get justice coalition or militant candidates in our local to make it a democratic union. That will be shared as soon as uh, the particular persons involved in that project are, are ready to share it. <laughs> Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, I think we should all be in the same union local two different locals is just terrible but they're negotiating the same contract i agree it's like it's just disgusting because it's like they use it to keep us divided on things that we shouldn't be divided about you know i mean it's just it's just uh it doesn't benefit us at all to have rail and bus separate we're in the same union, the same contract. It's just madness. It's madness. Any other uh, comments, and then we'll we'll wrap it up. Okay, so um, I think we'll we may have a meeting next Sunday, um, but <clears throat> I have to check my calendar. If anyone wants to chair a meeting, uh, you got to uh, see. I'm using another person's Zoom account, so I don't want to give out their credentials. So um, I got to check my calendar. Um, things are going to change a little bit because I have uh, I have to switch my off days to go to a, to the <coughs> local 241 union meeting. So that may screw things up um, a little bit. But we'll try to set up uh, a, a meeting next week or the week after. Um, but definitely uh, look out for updates about a protest next week. Uh, and then we have also, do not forget, please spread the word. Take back your union Tuesday um, at the Justice Coalition Facebook page. We have an events section. And this is the uh, past uh, event. This, this is our current event right now. So I'm just going to go right to the Justice Coalition 
um, main page, uh, uh, Facebook page. Now you can access that through our website too, chicagotransitworker.com. Just scroll to the bottom, uh, click on the Facebook icon that will take you directly to our public Facebook page and click on Take Back Our Union Tuesday. Share it even if you can't go. Put, click on Interested if you are interested, but you can't go. Uh, spread the word. We want Keith Hill, Eric Dixon to know you, we do not tolerate the cancellation of our meetings because they don't cancel their executive board meetings, but they sure as hell cancel our meetings. And that's not right. Let's go to uh, uh, Jan. Oh, we got your hand back. And then we'll get Andre. Uh, Eric, I just wanted to remind you that the week after next is our in-person meeting. So, I mean, if you don't want to do a meeting for next week, that's fine. We will be in the in-person meeting the week after that, which is the 17th. You know what? I think that's what we'll do. We'll focus on that because otherwise people might get a little confused because the meetings will be so close, right? And then, you know, you know how we all work, right? So it's kind of like we, we can't really sit on this stuff and, and, and promote it at different times. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to jump right to the in-person meeting, make it really a fat agenda. Um, thank you, Jan. But you had something else you wanted to share. Dan, you I'll share that in the I'll share it in the in-person meeting, okay? Okay. Or did you want me to pause the recording? Uh, it was just about, it was about safety. Uh, I mean, if you want to, you got time. Sure. Let's let's pause the recording and let let's get that. So that was it. Uh, we are done with the meeting. Thanks a lot for joining us. Any last comments? Put it in now. See you soon. All right. See you on the 17th. Then everybody, everybody be safe. Thank you. Everybody. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. See y'all later. See y'all on the 17th. Thanks again for joining and watching this meeting.